Good evening and welcome again. Um, following the State of Cinema of 2021 by Nicole Brenes and the screening of AI at War by Florent Marcy, we now have a chance to talk with Florent about his film. I am uh, still here at Class, and I'm glad I'm joined by Florent Marcy and Nicole Brenes. Hello. Hello. Hello, Gerhard Pian. Hello, Gerhard Pian, and hello, everybody. Hello, Nicole, of course. <laughs> Hello, Flo. Uh, maybe as a starting point, uh, a first question for Nicole. Uh, although you explain it quite thoroughly in your text, why did you choose uh, Florence's film to accompany your speech? How could we say does it speak to the present? And how does it speak to for you on contemporary cinema? First, thank you so much, uh, Gerhard Jan, for your invitation. Um, I'm feeling suddenly very important <laughs> to have to explain my vision of cinema for today. Um, of course, it's only a, a list of proposals, suggestions, and uh, to, to share uh, with other cinephiles or, uh, all over the world. And about Florent, Florent Marcy is for me one of the most important filmmakers for today. Uh, since I met his work uh, years ago already. Uh, it was with Saya uh, in 2001, I think. Um, I'm a great admirer of all what he does. I mean, there, there, there are the films as, a, in a way, achieved uh, objects of, of art, and, uh, but there is also all his gestures, uh, his way to be in the world. Uh, everything impressed me very much. Uh, and in, in this sense, is, I, I had the same feeling and the same uh, analysis also about people like René Vautier, for example, or Bruno Moel, or you know, these kind of amazing committed filmmakers who always uh, go uh, um, to where history is blowing and where something is dangerous, uh, not for themselves, but, but for people who are in a, a difficult situation. And with different tools, different motivations, uh, maybe different perspectives, is the case also for Florent, uh, whose work is devoted to uh, mainly to war fronts uh, in Chechenia, in Libya, in, in Syria, in exactly the place in the world where nobody wants to go. <laughs> and that's where uh, Florent always uh, goes for sometimes during very long time. Some, sometimes during 10 years, he can uh, go uh, several times to, for example, Chechenia. And his films are the result of a very deep uh, um, understanding uh, and also proximity with the people he's filming, he's really sharing their conditions. And so it's a body of work uh, that is for me crucial, uh, not only for this year, of course, but for this decade, for this, the, this beginning of, of a century. Uh, and we are not uh, enough to know this yet. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of admirers of, uh, Florence work, but uh, for me, it's, it's undervaluated, under-evaluated uh, until now for, for very material reason, because Florence is also uh, alone, not only to shoot, not only to edit, not only con to conceive, to achieve his film, but also in a way to distribute them. Uh, so it's so many different tasks, and it's, so it's very difficult to, to work at everything at the same time even if he had some help now, for example, by the very uh, radical and uh, beautiful website, uh, Les Mutins de Pangé, who is uh, showing some of his films. films. And uh, I at War, so is for me one of the most uh, fascinating, uh, global, uh, questioning film essay. And until now it has not, uh, as, as, as shown as, 
as it should be. I mean, it, it should be, a, it, for me, it's already a classic for our time uh, because it, it encapsulates many, many uh, assets, many um, questions, may, many big problems. And of course, um, it's also the formally, aesthetically, a totally original and unique film. So for all these reasons and also more, uh, well, th there was a true necessity to, to show this film. And of course, also uh, for people to be able to meet uh, Florent, because not only is a great filmmaker, but uh, he's also someone who talks very brilliantly about uh, his films, his work, the situation he's dealing with, and also uh, uh, the world in which we are uh, all emerged. And to, to end with this, uh, with this introduction, uh, I would say that uh, also the, the place, the, the crossroad uh, between journalism and film, journalism and cinema, uh, uh, this particular, particular crossroad that is not very well uh, um, researched uh, and even analyzed in, in, in the film studies for me. Uh, maybe it's, it's, it's in France, but um, uh, in France, there is not so many uh, studies about this exact place. Uh, and for me, Florent is um, exactly standing at this crossroads between the question, what is a fact and what is a form? And all his work is a, a, an exploration of this crossroads in aesthetical term and for me that's also one of the reasons why it's so so crucial and and beautiful voilà. <laughs> thank you nicole <laughs> thank you very much it's so it's not uh, easy to hear that and i i, I in a I certain way i shouldn't hear that so much <laughs> because i can die tomorrow i'd be happy great what you say is true i mean of course thank you um florent as you as nicole says you're your work comprises several films that are set in conflict zones and uh, they explore, you could say, the tension or the crossroads, as she says, between cinema and journalism. Maybe we could say that in this film, the approach is a bit different as you are not alone, you are accompanied by uh, Sota, a smart robot. Could you maybe tell us something about starting from the films that you have made in those uh, areas? How, did, how it led you to this film? Which questions brought you to this specific work? Yes, uh, well, <laughs> how many time do we have? Uh, I try to make it short because, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult sometimes to, to explain the reason of your own uh, uh, choice, your own motivation. Mm -hmm. uh, so this film, for me, there is a kind of a logical, uh, it's, it's a kind of a logical approach, this film. It's, it's, it just follows the other one for, for many reasons. Uh, first reason, because um, I, I'm involved and I, I was very interested uh, in all the events about revolution, how the people uh, uprising, all different kind of situation. After 25 or 30 year, uh, years of uh, filming or, or taking picture of such a place, because I, I, I started, uh, during the Romanian Revolution, so it's it's more than 30 years ago, uh, you you have a kind of, of uh, your perspective is not the same. Uh, it's like a circle. You, you you meet the same situation like Afghanistan 30 years after, and so what, and so what. And it, I could apply this kind of of, of a judgment uh, uh, to to any kind of situation, which is at the end the history of, of, of humanity, which is always repeating in a way or a, another way. Uh, I'm using certain tools before, before me were writing or were using other tools. And I, I, I feel I belong to this kind of people. I'm, I, I'm a witness, not a witness in the way of journalism and, and, and all the connotation of, uh, around this, uh, this, this world, but uh, a witness in a very simple way. I just witnessed my time. I just witnessed my time. I, I'm, I was born in France. I was, I'm very lucky. I, I, it, is, it is now uh, uh, a word also uh, with a lot of uh, connotation. I, I have a kind of privilege as, as a white man, I would say, what do I do with my privilege? Because to have a privilege, uh, 
you, you can use it uh, uh, in different way. You can just benefit from it, or you can also use it in different ways. So me, uh, I decided a long time ago, I was uh, uh, like 20, and even before 20, before, because before that, I was, I was traveling, I was hitchhiking around the world. I decided to, to just use my, my situation to meet my world, to meet my time, to meet my, my, my people, to meet my brothers, to meet, uh, to meet adventure, to meet uh, uncertainty. You understand? So it is a very simple uh, motivation at first. And uh, while I was, I was uh, doing uh, my, my, my traveling uh, and I, I was thinking about my world, I met information because it was the best way to, to, to have a kind of, a, of excuse or reason to be there. Because if you go to an event, uh, let's, let's say a revolution in Libya or any, any place, it was in Romania first, people, they don't understand why you are here. If you just come uh, to see, you, you, uh, you, you, you are suspicious in, in a certain way. It is suspicious to be there ju just as a witness. Curiosity is, is, you are suspicious. You understand what I mean? So when you, when you have a camera, a photo camera, any kind of tool, then you have a good reason to be there. But for me, it, it has never been the reason to be there. The first reason is not to make film or camera. Uh, there is no, I mean, it's not the reason at all for me, it's just to be there because I want to be there. I'm curious and I want to see what is my time. So. In this, uh, in this kind of uh, in this um, life, I would say now, I face different situation, different kind of situation with revolution, war, where, where, where the people, uh, I, I feel, maybe I'm wrong, but that, that my feeling, where, where I, myself, I, I feel that I, I live in a, in a life at its fullest. You know, uh, you know uh, French uh, author Victor Hugo says, people who live as people who, who are in struggle, People who fight are those who live. He wrote something like this, and I feel like that. So I, I, I met different situations of that, of that uh, type also because my own history, our own history, your own history in Europe is, is made of this. Look at the border and the map. It didn't just uh, happen like this. It was not created by God. It was created by conflict. It was created by a lot of situations that we have all forgotten, but those situations are still there with uh, different uh, faces, you understand? So uh, I was I was uh, filming and working on on, on those situations. I felt that maybe I have I have a kind of a, uh, um, I, I don't know talent. I don't know that is the, the word, but uh, I, I can work on these situations. It's not uh, it's not for everybody to be there to work on, on, on such situation. I know with my own experience like this, so I have to use it. What should, what can I do with this? So in this uh, in this life. Way of life, I would say, I faced different situations, and I had the feeling uh, that uh, it was it was repeating itself. So, in general, uh, general uh, uh, way, for me, I did not want to repeat myself. Also, and also, I had the feeling uh, that during during the like five, ten years, six, seven years ago. Uh, and the feeling that, that there was another kind of revolution. It was it was on its way. It was a re revolution of algorithm, not the revolution that I filmed with the guns and, 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 and uh, like classical, I would say, traditional revolution, but another another type of revolution. Uh, and I felt at that time I was I was uh, I was living in Libya. I spent a few years there uh, during and after the revolution, and I had a strong feeling. I was I was. Uh, I was uh, watching uh, on the internet uh, news about Syria, about Arab Spring, you know, some failure about all this. And I had the feeling, wow, maybe the deepest revolution of my time is not what I film, what I already film. It's not such an event. It will, those events, it will repeat itself. And I know, I know where, what will be the end. L look at uh, Syria, for instance, or Libya, or uh, even, even Tunisia in a certain way. So I decided at that time that I should I should film this revolution, and uh, personally I was uh, I am and I am still uh, very interested in science. When I was at school, I was more uh, interested in science like math and physics uh, than uh, than history or this. So I I I, I still uh, uh, I, I am still very interested in science. I read many books about different kind of uh, right now. I'm writing also a book. Uh, and, and those books are not connected directly to war. It's, it's, it's just science, uh, any kind of physics, uh, math, uh, it can be. Okay, so I, I had this uh, um, 
this strong feeling that this revolution was, it was ready for me to make a film. And also because I work alone, as, as uh, Nicole uh, said, I am always uh, inside my computer. I'm always, uh, when I studied uh, uh, 25 years ago with the first, uh, like first personal computer to edit, it was uh, most of my time I was my head inside my computer, not in front of the screen, but just opening the computer, the box, uh, try to change the card because it was not working. So I'm very used to it, a computer algorithm. Uh, for, so I decided it was, it was the right moment for me. Okay, and also there was another aspect. This aspect is what I, I, I film. I film uh, war, war, war. What is war? It is mainly it is man against human against human in a certain way. And the, the war that is uh, going on now, it's not this kind of war. We all feel, we all have the feeling that algorithms are all around us. So it's not a war like a, a traditional war, but it is a kind of war, and it can become a, a kind of war because. Uh, it, it, we are threatened by that, uh, by algorithm, by, by the society who is, uh, who is now uh, uh, developing itself uh, all around the world. Algorithm is it's, it's, it's made to help human, human, but at the end, it's not for sure that it will help us because we lose a lot uh, with the algorithm. So for, for, for all these reasons, when I was in Libya, I, 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 had, I, had, I was sure that I, I, should, I should make a film about that, but how? How and uh, with 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 what? Which money? Uh, where? Where? With who? It, it, it was very really difficult because it's something that is ev everywhere. So mm -hmm. uh, anybody can also make a film about algorithm. And um, so I, I, I was thinking about uh, well, I was editing my film about Libya, and I was thinking about that. And then little by little, I had this idea because my way of working for different reasons. I was thinking, wow, the best for me would be to find a small robot, humanoid robot, and I will, I will, I will bring this robot with me uh, uh, in a war zone on the field. You know, you know that, that was that was an, uh, that the general idea, and uh, that's how the, the movie started. I, I didn't know where to find the robot. I didn't know uh, uh, if if I would find would find a robot. I didn't know. Uh, if it would be in France or abroad, I had no idea because it, this kind of robot was not in the shop. You, could, you, you, you cannot buy such robots. But for me, the film was already existing in my mind. I was sure it was for me the, the way, the, the way to proceed. Okay, um, so that, that's how that's how it, it all started. I, I, I found I finally I found a robot. It was uh, it was in a, uh, in France in a, in a big uh, technology show kind of uh, in Paris. And um, uh, I found this, this, this small robot. I had, I had a meeting with IBM company at that time. Uh, I contacted them uh, and uh, I had a meeting because I, I planned maybe I wanted maybe to use Watson, which is a uh, artificial intelligence uh, from IBM, a very uh, top level artificial intelligence. And uh, I had the meeting and the meeting was, I, I felt it's impossible to work with such a company. It is, it is corporate, so they will never follow me. They will never allow me to use Watson to go to Syria and to meet uh, to meet people from Dash, for instance, or people who met people from Dash. It's absolutely impossible. So I, I have to find a, a free robot, a free AI. And then I met this AI just after this meeting in the same in the same place. It was not uh, I did not have any appointment. Just I was walking around in, in this in this exhibition, and I I, I, I saw this small robot, and. And you know, sometimes it's like it's, it's quite funny because uh, I, I saw this robot. I like the, I like the, the shape. I like everything of the robot. Then it was it was it was a small. It was not not a big uh, like um, I don't know. It was a small place. It was on the table. It was not like uh, IBM, you know. And it was a lab uh, from Malaysia. Was written uh, the, the lab institute imaginary institute Malaysia, and one one of the of the of the of the of the lady who was uh, at that place she she had a, a hijab, uh, you know, a veil, mm -hmm. and there was another another man who was a, a person who were uh, they went from Malaysia they were uh, like Western Western uh, people so I asked one of them uh, where where are you from and that, that person was in charge of the robot, and he and he said. So he told me I'm from Serbia. 
Serbia. So in my in my head, a, 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 small, a small light, there was a small light, you know. Uh, you are from Serbia because Serbia, uh, Balkan, uh, it, you know, the war was, was in the Balkan not uh, only 25 years ago. So, so uh, through that, that Serbian uh, man, uh, the robot has a connection with my own, uh, my own story. And I asked him, where, where are you from Serbia? He said, I'm, I'm not, I don't, don't live in Serbia. I'm from Bukovar. And Bukovar was, uh, it, it's a city who was completely destroyed during the war in the Balkan. It was not a small story, it's a big story. I mean, destroyed city. So uh, I said, that's amazing. I, 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 you know, I have a meeting with IBM and I see this small robot. The, the, the person is from Vukovar. It, for me, it was a robot. And I started to talk with a, with a robot uh, because it, was, it is a chatbot, what you call a chatbot. So you can have a kind of a conversation with, with the robot. And I asked some question. And the answer, you can see this part in the film. The answer were, were amazing. The, the robot gave me answer, amazing answer. It, it, it was sometimes it was funny, and I said that's that's exactly the, the tool and, and and the friend I, I was I was waiting for. And so I, I said to this man, uh, Sasa is his name. I said to Sasa, uh, okay, Sasa, you have to trust me. I want to bring that robot in Mosul, and I have to go as fast as I can because it was of, of Mosul in 2017. So then I, 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 I took plane, uh, I jumped in a plane to Malaysia to meet the, the, the director of the, of the lab. And, uh, and after, after 10 minutes, he, he told me, yeah, okay, I like your ID, you, you can take it. And that, that's how I started. That's the story. So it was, it, it is, uh, you know, for me, uh, the, uh, it is just a normal following of what I've done before. There is another point I try, I also to, if I have some time to explain a little bit, it, it's, it's connected to journalism and the way you, you represent the world and, and all this. It's, this film also, as you, I think you have seen the, the movie, it, it's a mix of tragedy and burlesque, you know? It is something which is not, uh, well, you, you don't expect to, to see a robot in, the, in, in Mosul or in, uh, in Raqqa today. You expect uh, uh, a journalist to ask the, the people uh, how, how they suffer. So it was not my choice. I, of course, uh, I even pity for the people. But I also have the feeling that we, and, and, and you will understand what I say, we represent the world now daily with news gathering, with internet, with everything. We have ne never represent, represented the world in the, in the history at that level, every day, every second, okay? And sometimes when you, when you, when you, uh, for, for me, with my own experience, when I see some, some the way we represent the situation in Syria, I feel it's a kind of burlesque. Mm -hmm. Even if it is uh, serious, even, even if it is a drama, the level is so crazy. And think about the movie of Dash, which is absolutely a uh, awful film, but it, it is a kind of burlesque in a certain way. It is ridiculous. The people, they just uh, stage themselves. And, uh, you understand what I mean? So uh, for a long time ago, so I had, I had this idea. One day I should go and try to, to, to make a kind of a film uh, with, with a, a twist of burlesque inside the film. I don't want, uh, I don't want, uh, of course, I respect the people. It's, it's not the point because I respect the people. Because of all this, I must take this risk to try something new, to escape. Uh, from this, this way of representing the world, because where is the meaning at the end? And for me, the meaning, uh, the meaning is, is for me is to keep my own meaning. That's that's the first the first thing I should do to keep my own meaning. If I if I jump in a situation uh, to represent the world with the meaning of of a structure or of a, 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 a big company. I think I lose myself and it has no meaning at the end, even if in the appearance you have a great meaning. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. at, the, at the end, it is only a matter of uh, individual point of view of someone. And for me, it is this, uh, the, the, the fact that, that, that we can, we still, we still can do uh, uh, this, it's a, it's a kind of a resistance for me. At the end, it is the last the last and, and in the world of algorithm, I think we will we will understand that 
because we just disappear with the algorithm. There is no more point of view of nobody. You don't exist at the end. So the resistance is to give your own uh, 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 meaning, to resist to all the pressure around you, to, to, to give your own meaning to your time. What is my time? Who, who, who am I inside my time? That's, that's what I try to do in my film at the end. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um... Yeah, it's true that there's a certain. Uh... I just, I just, I, I want because okay. you, you were talking about my friend, so he's he is my friend. Oh, oh. So, and, and you will see there is, <laughs> in fact, there is two. Yes. Oh, wow. a little brother. Oh, That's there is the double. <laughs> is, the, the second one is a gift from uh, someone from Japan. He sent me because I broke something in the first one, and he, he gave me, he sent me a pack, uh, he sent me a second sota. Well, and. Florent, can I ask a question to Florent? Yeah, of course. Uh, of course. Uh, did you show your film to the people who built the robot? Not yet. Not yet? Uh, not But yet. I, I, do you plan to? I inform them. I inform. Alors, what you have to know is that the lab uh, uh, is, is closed. So it, it, it closed while I was still filming for, for different reasons in Malaysia. Uh, so it's, you know, uh, all the people I met there, They are now uh, all around the world, dispatched all around the world. So I, I, I inform uh, uh, Sasa, who is, who is uh, the creator, uh, not of the robot itself as, as the object, but uh, the creator of the algorithm behind, uh, of course. Um, I did not send him the link uh, because I, I, would, I would prefer uh, him to see the film on, on the real screen. Sorry for, for, for the, the screening of... Uh, of this film on the internet, but of, of course, for me, uh, I prefer that this Sasa, that I prefer him to see the film, uh, to watch the film on, on a screen and not on the internet. So, but uh, it, will, it will happen. I don't know how, but uh, we'll find the, uh, I'll find the solution. Great. And some years ago, um, I think it was three years ago already, um, you asked for me what is one of the most beautiful questions Uh, it was at Le Bal, you know, this uh, institution for photography in which we were uh, collectively thinking about uh, the image in the context of conflict and war. And your question was uh, in the digital world, uh, in the artificial intelligent world, uh, can we still make revolutionary images? And so what would be your answer for now? Well, my answer for now... And you have uh, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, I won't say a word for minutes. two minutes. <laughs> no, you know, uh, well, it's, 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 it's uh, what can I say? You know, who am I to say like this? But I, I can give you my, my feeling. But I know that that's the a problem topic is, yeah, you are, the, the problem, you are thinking about yeah. on a daily basis. So. No, no, but the, pro the problem is the appearance of something and the reality of something. The problem today is that we have the, we have the, the feeling and uh, the appearance is that we can produce image, uh, revolutionary, uh, revolutionary images uh, 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 daily. Think about a Black Lives Matter. Th those videos uh, who created the reaction. So in a certain way, of course, it exists. And it seems that uh, we should use those tools to show th this kind of images to change the world in a certain way. But I'm not sure. My, my deep feeling is that I'm not sure that we are so concerned by those questions. Even the people who are concerned by those questions, I'm not sure that the real concern is that question. It can be something else who motivates the people. I'm not sure that the people on the, on the social network are concerned by the questions they pretend to be concerned by. You know, it's always, a, it's, in fact, for me, if, if you ask me, what, 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 why do you film? And I could say, uh, I want to say people, they are suffering, we have to stop this. this. And as I, I tried to explain you, my first motivation is something more personal. It's a more curiosity. I'm not, I, I don't go to Chechnya to save uh, the world. You know, I don't go to Africa to save Africa. I don't go nowhere to save people. Maybe at the end, I, I will be a part of this of this uh, uh, stake but it's not a, a, a choice uh, it's not a choice really at first you know it can it can uh, it can uh, the choice can appear while you are while you are on your way and that's what happened in my work 
you receive some responsibility because because the fact that you are here and the fact that you feel bring you bring you some responsibilities that even if you don't want to have them, but to have the responsibility. So the problem is that we live in a world with so many images, so many representations of everything, with so many uh, uh, aspects of why, why you have interest to be a part of this uh, spectacle. Uh, you, 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 you have some interest uh, for your, your morality or for ethics, uh, ethical reason, but it's, it's not for sure that you, you, you are fighting for those reasons. You understand? I, 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 will, I will give you another example. You went Say, saying, Nicole, the, the, the position where you work alone, uh, like my, my position. And sometimes, imagine you, you show a film where you, 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 you reveal some very bad aspect of human beings which fight against poverty and everything. But myself, I'm very concerned of by, by how this film was made. What is the part of the film that you never see on the screen? And you know, at the end, uh, because we are experts of rhetoric in this world, this image and everything. Where is the deepest message? Where is the real message uh, in a film? Is it on the screen with the reaction of the people in front of the screen, or is it the tools and, and the, the means that you are you use behind and you that you hide? You don't want those tools to be to be apparent. Is it is it the tools that you use to make the film whatever message is? In the film, uh, is this a tool? Maybe the tool has a real message. Okay, a few years ago, there was a film uh, in, in France, not only in France, uh, and it's like maybe more than 10 years ago. The name was Home, or maybe 50. It was about ecology. Maybe you saw this film. And this film, it was everywhere on the internet, and it was to, to show the planet. We have to protect the planet and everything. How the film was financed? This film didn't cost any money to, uh, to the state for television. It was financed only by big corporations like LVM, LVMH, Dior company. And at the beginning of the film, I remember you had you have a, a, a sky with stars. And then all the stars uh, start to move. And, 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 and you have all the, the marks, the name of this company <laughs> from the star who are in the screen. And then they, they create the, the, the word home. What is the meaning of that film? I'm not saying that you have to be pure to, 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 to have a, a message of pure purity, but there is a balance. You cannot, you cannot just uh, use uh, a, a rhetoric uh, as a lie. You understand what I mean? And, and, and in our world, we, are very, we, we became all experts of, of, in media, the messages, meanings, uh, in appearance. Uh, appearance. And my, my problem is that the way I make film, I touch at every aspect of the film, even subtitles, I, I do subtitles, it, anything in the film I, 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 do, I do myself. And it, when, you, when you work that way, it changes completely the perception that you have of the film. You understand? I don't know if it's, it's right, if you, okay, you are in the, in the, in the back door, is there a, you understand, backstage, and, and what you see, uh, think about Me Too movement. Okay, you have uh, Hollywood for your stars, everything. And now, when you go, <laughs> you go in the backstage, uh, of, of course, we, we could, we could, we could, uh, we suspected that it was already like this, but it, it is something, uh, you know, you, you understand what I mean? What you discover behind, sometimes it's, it's completely at, at the opposite of what was in front. So that's, that's, uh, uh, I mean, to, to, for me to make like a, a, a revolutionary image, you have to be, uh, th there must be a coherence in your message. That's what I think. If you just use a message uh, of, of poverty, uh, even if the message is strong, even if, if, if the situation is real, but just with bad reason behind, I think at the end, maybe not today or tomorrow, but at the end, in five years or 10 years, we will all lose because it will be confusion. And, and I think the world now is like this. It is this kind of world. It's a big confusion uh, about everything. It is very hard to, to, to create a message and to keep its integrity, uh, even, even if it is normal that the message, there is distortion, but to keep a kind of integrity, it is very hard 
to do to do this uh, today. Okay, distributors, you need distributor for your film, but sometimes um, you lose the control. Uh, then you you lose sometimes the rights, some some right on your own film. Uh, you you cannot organize organize a screening in a in a theater, a one shot screening. You don't have the right. It's it, you have contract. You have you know it's it's very all those questions are um, it's not easy to answer. It was more than three minutes. Sorry. Yeah, though, but it's the. I don't know if I was absolutely clear because, uh, in English. I'm not. I'm not as fluent in French, of course. But no, it's quite. I yeah, I, th I think we can make a summary saying maybe it's a proposal, but to you have to be the revolution that you want uh, to make happen. Yeah. No. That, that, that's exactly. That, exactly. But and 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 believing when you work alone in the film. You understand what is a revolution, the cost of the revolution. Yeah. You understand the cost of the, it. Ha, it has a cost. It, mm. it, it's not only, uh, uh, you know, it's not only like uh, glamour or like of there is a cost. Of course, yeah, yeah. That's that was a, a motto by Jean Luc Godard: "La liberté coûte cher." Yeah, yeah. Mm. of course. It was the motto of uh, film socialism. Uh. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we maybe can conclude here. Um, Florent, thank you for taking the time to answer our questions and uh, the opportunity to show your uh, yeah, magnificent film. And thank you, Nicole, as well as accepting uh, our invitation for the State of Cinema this year. Uh, see you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so Bye. much. Thanks to you. Thanks to everybody. Yeah.